Hello, welcome to the Daily Telegraph NRL podcast. Adam Mobbs here, thinking we'd be online a little earlier, but Brent Reid can't put his phone down. A couple of calls this morning, Reid, man. A couple of ones, yeah. How are you going? Nothing important. Just jibber. Just jibber. Wasn't one of the blokes you were just on the phone to the boss of the NRL? Oh, he didn't have much for me. <laughs> He's going to come back to me. Stay tuned. Nice. Um, uh, yeah, a bit of the golf, obviously. A couple of days of the golf. Then woo. Um, well, f- yeah. first I've got to introduce, by popular demand, Russell Jackson back. back in the chair. Where am I? Where am I? There I am. <laughs> killing him with the camera. Good start. Good start. Yeah, Russ, yeah. can I... What did you think when we told you there was an avalanche? Well, an avalanche, avalanche might be a, a couple of family members <laughs> yeah. Yeah. saying that they wanted Jackson back on the podcast. Oh, look, you know, good, good judges, I, I think, and mm. it's great to be back um, and great to see the show listens to the fans. <laughs> I think it says a lot about the fans who actually listen well, to the show. That they want Russ back. Now, this is usually a buzz domain, but can mm. I please chip you on your attire today? Well, as I said, I've been to the golf. And golf's the only sport in the world where the journalists dress the same as the athletes. <laughs> so I've got a polo shirt and shorts on. Yes. Can I'm not quite as well dressed as Cam Smith or Minwoo Lee, but mm. I'm having a go. A bit of Ralph Lauren. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's a knockoff from Manila when I was there for the Manny, <laughs> pack, Manny Pacquiao training session. Yeah. Can yeah. you also confirm that yeah. you may, in fact, be the, in possession of the world's fastest swing as a golfer? I've, I've tried to slow it down, actually. I've got, I've got a tip. I've got a mate, Jimmy Deegan, Jimmy, if you're out there listening, who's uh, tipped me into a bit of, bit of uh, um, advice on how I can improve my golf game, slowing down my backswing. Mm. Have they told you 30 70? 30 on the backswing, 70 on the way the through. The only problem is, Mobs, it's like all things. When, when you struggle a little bit, you revert to type. Yes. So the, the slow backswing lasted about, about two shots. Now I'm back <laughs> to the fast backswing. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I played with Blake Solly last Friday in a golf day. Did you? I actually hit him really well. You did or he Solly did? did? Or Solly did him all right, too. Oh, okay. oh, I smashed a few. Jeez, there were some burglars in that tournament. <laughs> we had 16 under, the group we were in. Nice. With We, we, we were 7 under for a round. Yeah nine shot handicap some mob won it they were about 21 under we didn't even make the top three it was an absolute rort <laughs> whoever won that golf day the lead lead the Brydon's lawyer's golf day is you're an outrage well I'm, I'm protesting it's a protest I'm sure I'm, I'm sure, sure Hadji Tellis can Lee probably won it. it probably stitched it up himself well, I better. shouldn't say that anymore it's in a legal, legal he's weather. got a bit Take on his plate at the moment yeah. the back, Lee. How, how is Lee looking at the moment oh he's shaky I think it's a pretty simple way to put it. He's looking pretty shaky. I don't think he'll he'll be the chair there beyond or maybe the next couple of weeks. I reckon there might be some change. I think they'll all go. I think the entire board You think board they're going to clean sweep gonna, it? I think they'll clean sweep it, yeah, and start again. Wow. Yeah. So well, I mean, I think obviously that review's been ongoing and the review's finished now and they gave um, the Holman Barnes group a, a preview of it the other night, Tuesday, mm. Tuesday night. Uh, and Lee and the other directors haven't seen it yet or been told what's in it, but um, my understanding is that it basically recommends wholesale changes at board level because that board's just not qualified enough. If, if yeah. the, uh, that's not a reflection on They're all really successful in what they've done. Mm. But for what you ne- need to run a football club, there's not the diversity of skills and the, um, um, you know, just that, that um, broad base level yeah. of skills across the board so I think the view is clean it out start again and actually go and get people with the dif- different skills that suit a football club mm. so and Lee might you know, Lee might end up I don't know maybe Lee reapplies and he's back on there maybe that's what happens I mean he's obviously a skilled guy he's a pretty smart operator mm. having a footy club mm. so and it, he loves the joint is it more optics that they get rid of the entire board to make it seem like they're just sweeping out everything, or do they have to get rid of everybody there? Well, I think uh, I think it makes it easier if you just get rid of everyone and start again, and mm. they can re- they can reapply to be on the board again. I mean, they can try and be on it again. There's not saying they won't be there right. again, but I just think, um, given the way that clubs functioned. And, and the board's got a lot of power at that fo- footy club. I think that's one of the things with Justin Pascoe, right? The board's always interfered in Justin's running of the football club. So Justin has some really had a fair go at showing he's a really mm. competent, or well, I shouldn't say competent, because he, he goes all right, but mm. he's not a really um, highly qualified CEO in terms of running that footy club. So I think the view is, if you start again at board level, maybe you leave Justin there and give him a chance to keep running the show without the interference. Then you build a board around him that can help him 
the, the, the diverse set of skills, mm. that's more attuned to a modern football club. Mm. Right, right. What the Roosters, Russ? Yeah, well, they've got a very qualified board. Yeah, they certainly do. Do they have? Is there a, a, a time frame or anything for Pasco? Like with these future, do they look at things, do they reassess after a year or? I mean, winning solves everything, of course, yeah, yeah. and help them out. But is there anything like well, that I hanging over his head? I, I'd suggest if they change, if they made that board level change and they changed everything, I would imagine the new board would have a say in the CEO. Yeah. But it's going to take some time. You can't just mm. click your fingers and mm. some have eight people who are, who are ready to be on a board. Mm. You've got to go and look around, and that'll take some time. Hmm. From a football department side of things, do you think they're where they need to be now? Because obviously they've gone all, all in on Benji. Yeah. They've sorted out his assistants. You've got Scott Fulton there, obviously. Uh, head of football, what's doing? Well, th- is it Matt Betsy's in there? Yes. Interim? You know, I think at some point, when, once all this board rigmarole is sorted out, they'll go, go and search for a head of football. I mean, Benji's obviously really keen on Mark O'Neill, guy who played um, a lot of footy with. Mark's pretty settled at Parry. You'd probably know better than me, obviously, whether, whether Mark would consider it. My gut feeling is he wouldn't. Mm. But they might make you an offer that's too good to refuse. But he's the guy Benji would love to have back there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, and obviously... I mean, they sounded out Frank Panissi. Yes. They sounded out Parry, Peter Parr, and neither of those guys were keen on making the move. You, may, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Exactly. So I, I didn't think they were a realistic hope of... But I don't mind that. You know, people have a go at the Tigers about having these... Um, you know, missing out on players. Like mm. they might miss out on Jerome, right? Yeah. At least they're having a swing, at least having a go. Mm. Yeah. You know, at least yeah. at least their, their their fans are and their fans get disgruntled about it all and say, well, these blokes have knocked us back. Yeah. Well, well, you know, why do we have to read about it in the paper? But at least they're out there having a go. Mm. At least they're giving their fans some hope. Mm. You know, they're going to have a go at Adam Fanua Blake. They might miss them both. They might get them both. They get them both. They're a completely different football team. Oh. And at least they've been exactly. in the fight. Yeah, and we yeah. spoke about this last week, didn't we? That Tigers team, they've got the basis of really yeah. decent, you know, Jareem Buller, Coruscant, mm. they yep. throw Luai in there, and you know, they've yep. got good forwards. Yeah. Um, and you, good, you've got some good kids coming through. Yeah. The mm. young Lockie Galvin, everyone's raving about him at that footy club yep. at the yep. moment. Yeah. So yep. there's some talent there. Talent to Silver, the young hooker yeah. who's come That's through, cool. played a little bit of first grade so far. Look at those lar- the large kids who are, I think the young kids yeah. who are really young who are coming through yeah. as well, so they've got some good kids. Um, you reported this week that they had another meeting with Jerome yeah. Luai. <laughs> that probably shows their intent, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, because he's already got an offer in front of him, so they've obviously met with him now to just try and reinforce um, his place in the team and how important he is to them, but obviously Gus has come in now as well. Um, you know, he's in demand, he's got a decision to make. And I'd imagine, I think, you know, the, the mail I was getting was he wanted to make it before he went back to training, which I think is December 8, mm-hmm. um, which I think's is it tomorrow week? Tomorrow yeah, week. So yeah, if, if you, you follow that timeline, I mean, the clock's ticking. He's going to have to make a decision pretty soon. Yeah. And yeah. the Tigers are in the box seat because they've offered the most money and they're the most advanced in talks with him. Do you think, is Jerome Luai the guy that Bulldogs need? Um, He'd be a great signing for them, but as far as what they need, I mean, I'm just talking about obviously middles is the big issue. And yeah. The, the well, they're in for Fenua Blake, mm. and that's pretty pretty clear. Yeah. Um, it depends what you do with Burton, I reckon. Mm. If you play Burton in the centres, I mean, Sexton, everyone, I, everyone keeps telling me Toby Sexton's a really good footballer and can be a really good mm. footballer with good a good side around him, right? So imagine he's your seven. You move Burton to the centres. You bring Lou Owen as a six. You've got the right and left foot, a kicking combination, the halves. Mm. That could be... That's Then you look at that back line. You've got Lou Owen, yeah. Crichton, uh, Addo Carr, um, Karaz, mm. um, Sherry, we don't Taff. know. We're well, Sherry's a lottery, isn't he? In, yeah, mm. yeah. But, yep. um, you know, you've got the makers of a really, really good back line. Yeah, but yeah. The, as you said, the... the, the, the the missing ingredients, mi- missing ingredient is middle forwards. Yes, they need yep. it badly. Yep. Well, badly. Look, look at this. So uh, they're in their top 30 at the moment. Liam Knight, Max King, Ryan Sutton, Sam Hughes. Now they've got mm. Pawasa Farmasili, who they signed from the Dolphins. Now he's 27. He's on their development list because they haven't got a spot for him in the top 30. Yeah. So he's your man, Russ. He was a Roosters man back yeah, in the day, wasn't he? Was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hard yeah. running. You a fan? Uh, he was a goer. He was a goer. 
That's a bit of a rat. What a rat, mate. He was a guy. He had a go. I didn't lose any sleep over him. This is the Sean Kepi thing all over again. Yeah, I like Sean. Good man, Sean. But that's, yeah, no, they they need metal. I mean, oh, God. Yeah. yeah. And the the photo snap last weekend, last last week of Mm. Gus with Fanua Blake. Yeah. That's what they Mm. want to see. Do you think the Warriors would let him go clean or would they be looking at some sort of player swap? I think they'd be looking at some sort of player swap, but there's not many players that are mm. the what they do? Tigers or ke- the Dogs that you'd be mad keen on. Those clubs would want to let go yeah. and they'd be mad keen on mm. of the ones they would want to let go, right? Yeah. So, geez, that you look at those props, though. I mean, I think Ryan Sutton's basically, I don't know whether he's been told he's free to, free to look around, but he's seemed on the arrow a lot of the time in mm. the last 12 months. Yep. Um, I think Max King's off contract at the end mm. of the, uh, 24, and, and Max is having a look around as well. Um, Liam Knight's only done to the end of 24, I think. They're really short yeah. in 12 Sam, months' time. Sam Hughes had very little first-rade yeah. football. He was uh, a New South Wales Cup prop, came through at Parramatta. Cronulla Jr., I think, Sam Hughes. Uh, and Liam Knight, I think last season in his 10 first-grade games, I think it was mm. two of them where he played more than 40 minutes. So mm. it's a lot of load on this forward pack now. Yeah. So, so where the issue is throwing money at Luai is money that just could be better spent elsewhere, right? I mean, mm. that, you know, if you had That's a choice, right. yes. can they fit Luai and Adam Fanua Blake? Mm. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. They've got so much money tied on their back line. So if you've got to sacrifice one of them, for me, you sacrifice Jerome. Yeah, and yeah. you get Adam Fanua Blake in. Yeah. So I've got to ask, because if you've got, I sort of assume a 13 would be Curran, right? Yeah. Um, oh, Curran's, yeah. And that would give you Kikau and Preston. It's not bad. Not um, a bad back row. Yeah. And then, you know, you look at, then obviously on, on your bench, you assume that, um, where am I looking here, at um, Jamin Salmon would have a spot on the bench. Okay. Potentially. Would it, well, you look at the back. Well, that's the issue, isn't it? There's so many <laughs> utilities well, there. You've got Jake Turpin <laughs> there, who's basically another hooker, but yeah. you, you're going to. Reed Marnie's your number nine. He's your captain. He's your talisman. You're going to yeah. need him playing 80 minutes. You don't need to carry a specialist hooker on the bench, especially when you look at. They've got Jamin and Salmon. They've got Kurt Mann. Mm. Um, you know. You wouldn't carry Salmon and Mann, though, would you? No. Sure? Well, why, no. why sign both of them? No. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't have thought they paid the world for either of them. But I agree. I mean, their 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 spending spree's been a bit strange. Mm. They just signed a lot of Blake Taff, Kurt Mann, Jamin Salmon. Yeah, you know, a lot of those guys. Who okay, they they give you depth. Yeah, Connor Tracy, and they make you you. And Hayes Perrin, we got listed there, but he'll be gone soon enough. I suspect there's some clubs around him now. But they send send out a lot of guys who are good first graders. Mm. They give you more depth. And they make your squad, your top 30 stronger overall. But I don't necessarily think they make your starting 13 much better. Yeah. And that's the issue, right? Because, um, okay, they might lose a Blake Taft through injury during the season. They bring in a Connor Tracy. Mm. It still doesn't make you an elite football team. No. So, what... Connor Tracy, he's come from Cronulla looking for a regular first grade spot, and you know uh, Connor Tracy's 27. He's no spring mm. chicken either. He's 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 been around. He's not that he's past it by any stretch, but mm. he's going to want to come and play first grade. Yeah, where's he going to play in this lineup? Would he if they keep Burton at six, he comes in the centres maybe? Does he play maybe he plays fullback? fullback if they move if they play Crichton in the Crichton, centres? Yeah. So then you've got Taff. Who I mean, does Taff go to six? Does Taff go to one? Where does he? I think he'll be one of the two. Yeah. I'm not sure which way it goes, but I imagine those two guys will be in the team. Yeah, one will be the one, depending on what happens with Burton. Yeah, one will be the six or the seven. Mm. Oh, right. six or the or the other centre. Yeah. Sorry, I'd imagine. But again, that doesn't address the big issue, which is their forward pack. No, in the middle no. of the field. They get steamrolled through the middle. Yeah. Right? It's, how are they fixing that? And look, but, it's hard. You know what they need to do is mirror the Sydney Roosters. You keep retention policy. He's laughing every time. Because have they one. lost a bloke? <laughs> Seriously. Satilli <laughs> uh, uh, this morning. Satilli <laughs> this morning. Confirmation of SportCon. Oh, sorry sorry from last week. Hang oh, on. Hold on. Oh, oh, hang on. Hang on. Oh, hang on. He's distracting us. He's trying oh, to distract us uh, from uh, the issue. On. So, hang on. listeners, when you ask why Russell Jackson has been on the podcast, this is why. He just... What's the he professional, done? he's dropped his, a tech, dropped his uh, battery pack here. Is it still oh, going? Yeah, it's it's still, still I think she's still working. What's, what's happening there, Russ? Two, one, two. Roosters. They're, they're well, just I might just keep this on the desk. My little since, pouch is... Um, 
yeah. little pouches come and stuff. Can you let the bull, the Bulldogs desperately need players, and you're just signing everyone? Can you teach them how to retain players? Well, yeah, well, it's a bit of an art form, isn't there? To this, um, well, I can retain everybody. Um, really? You lost a kid to rugby, so I well, think Angus is available <laughs> to talk to, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they don't want to keep. I don't think they're, they're, they're happy to let Angus go. No, I'm saying he'd, he'd go okay for the dogs if they want. Um, they want something there. He could handle a middle for a while. He could play middle. Angus mm. could. Not the worst shout. Oh, he's better than he's better than any of these guys mm. as a middle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did I answer your question? No. 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 You dodged Thanks. an expert. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, another re-signing Satili Tupanua. Yeah, Just three three years. Yeah. Mm. Three years on the back of uh, uh, Nat Butcher doing the same thing, so yeah. And Siwa Wong, big year. Obviously. And Siwa, yeah, big big year for Satili Tupanor. I sort of yeah. don't know where he's at. Mm. I'm surprised by the length of that deal, actually. He's had some injuries, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, bit, I think he had the knee, and then he's had a bit of a neck issue that's mm. yeah. made him a bit that's of right. things. But before yeah. that, he's been tremendous. I yeah. thought so. Yeah. Yeah. But you're a big C.Y. Wong man. So, I'm a big yeah, C.Y. Wong man, been, yeah, I think so. I think satilli has got to get it done in big games. He, he's he's had some... Yeah, he's caused a bit of damage uh, over the years, but not, not so much in the big in the big games. What do the they do there? Because so. then they've got three-edge yeah, well, back rowers. Who, no, does one of them play they're... in the middle or play lock, or what do you do? Yeah, I'm not too sure. Because you've got, and they've got Angus as well. Mm. Angus, you've got um, Spencer coming into that prop rotation too. <laughs> prop mm. rotation is pretty red hot. So, so how does Victor Radley? So how does your prop? So how does your yeah. forward pack well, look now? God, yeah. Well, start. Do you start Jared? Uh, oh, horses for courses. I think. I think he'll start some, but not. Yeah, I think you've got to sort of manage him through the season. Uh, your man Lindsay Collins. Gee, that's a good forward pack, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's very good. Yeah, I mean, you'd, you'd think you'd, you'd be starting. Um, yeah, I think they'll start the season, what, with Collins and, and, and we're Hargreaves mm. and then um, Spencer off the bench. Yeah, and, then you have Wong on one side who, is it, do you start Crichton or? Uh, Jeez, you carry your drop well, Butcher after the year, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Butcher's been he fantastic, is isn't he? Yeah. So do you carry, do you carry two edge guys? Well, there's, e- there's Egan Butcher Angus. as well, who, mm. you know, he's been playing a bit of middle. One of them um, will have to play him as well. Yeah, one of them will have to, have to play in the middle, yeah. won't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Crichton can play middle. Yeah. And Tupanur will play middle, I don't... Uh, yeah, I think he can, but I don't think it's his spot. I don't. He's one guy that yeah, you'd rather see on the edge with his athleticism and and all that. Should I, win the comp with that team, with that forward pack. Well, it's pretty really? good. Uh, Butcher, it's pretty good. Crichton. Yeah. Um, and that's a that's a red. Lenu. Mm. No, I haven't got you a I haven't got you a fourteen yet on the bench in in your four. Well, got they got a few of those bench. too. I mean, Sand and Smith emerged as a. Mm-hmm. Oh, he was outstanding, wasn't he? Yeah. He had a great final series. He was terrific. And Con- Connor Watson's been uh, been re-signed oh, been as well. Too. So, oh mate, I am um, <laughs> honestly. Oh, oh yeah. that's that's the one that Canterbury could. Even the one Canterbury wanted another utility, yeah, and they couldn't Connor get him. Couldn't that's get the him. one utility they couldn't get. Oh, he just loves. He loves <laughs> well, we it. didn't mention Drew Hutchinson before, either, mm. did we? Mm. He's got to be a utility value. They got him for he the does. Roosters. Yeah. Well, yeah. But that's that team, Specialist Russ, on center, paper. Russ. Surely, <laughs> yeah. surely you look at that Roosters team on paper and think. You're hopeful. What, 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 what happens in the back line, though? With that's oh, oh geez. sorry. I'm hey. sorry, Scrooge McDuck. Is, <laughs> yeah. is the, is the money <laughs> picked too deep? We'll scribble, <laughs> we'll scribble those names down and tell me where everybody's playing. Like, what does it matter? Dom Young, Daniel Two. So They're the wingers. Like, Tedesco one. Where does Swaliti play? Rugby. He's been no. fantastic. <laughs> he's been fantastic on the wing. He's a he's a well, outstanding he's the wing, So Manu in wing. the centres. Um, Billy Smith is he your other centre? Yeah. Yep. Is he? Um, and then that leaves you Tupo. Tupo. Yep. Young and And Swali. I don't yes. think Tupo makes the team. He's And then Kier, what Kiri and Walker. That's a fair team, Russ. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't, I don't know. You, if they don't win the Tupo's Tupo's one season. of my first guys picked. Even even now I still I think he's one of the first guys on the team sheet. If they but don't I, win the comp next season, questions need to be asked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. rightly so. I'm declaring yeah. pressure. <laughs> yes, oh. pressure on on who? who? Robert? Who? I can't Robert? I'm not saying that. He's <laughs> off me enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not putting any pressure on Robert. What's happened? Do, I, do we? Does Buzz need to come in? Do I need to call in the specialist? I mean, Buzz, Buzz could sort out the Gaza Strip drama, but you and Robert. Well, sorted out me and Ray. Apparently, apparently Ray eased off me after after a chat with Buzz. Really? Okay. Yeah. 
Right. Mm. Oh, can, can we get an updated Ray Hadley power rankings? For the oh, challenge? yeah, yeah. He's, I might be off the bottom. He left us hanging for more. He was about number 30. <laughs> Russ, <laughs> Russ loves a power rankings list. It's oh, so yeah. <laughs> we need an update there. Oh, Tyson oh. Jackson swanning around the office. He oh. was up there. What was he, number three or something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Young kid coming through. That's right. And, oh, yeah, geez. Yeah. Tell you what, he, he can hold a grudge. Ray, can't well, he? Apparently, yeah. <laughs> it's all over now, I believe. The, the feud with Reedy's mm. finished. He moved on to someone else. Oh, Josh no, Drayton. I think he's been oh, oh, he's, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> he was ripping into him a little while ago. He's still fighting the bloody Super League war or Vietnam, uh, Hadley, isn't he, with the ill stuff? <laughs> let's it? not go too big in a Ray, because he'll, he'll target us. We need to just tone that down. Oh, there's Dave Riccio walking oh, past Dave Riccio. Yeah, it's rung me, Dave. Making faces at us through the glass. He was limping. Did he limp in there, Dave? He was. He's favouring that left leg. Yeah, something wrong there we might have to uh, check we might have some breaking news on Dave Riccio <laughs> if it's not cryptosporidium <laughs> poisoning from being injury. NZ um, uh, speaking of NZ Kurt Capel's doing the rounds yeah. at the moment so he looks like at 30 uh, yeah. the guy likely to be squeezed out at yeah. the Broncos yeah? well they've re-signed Ricky mm-hmm. uh, they've re-signed Paikura yep. and they'll be their starting back rowers next year so um, yep. I'd imagine uh, yeah, they need the money obviously with Ezra they've got to re-sign Ezra Mam. They've got to re-sign, um, well, they've got to extend or upgrade Reese Walsh at some point. They need the cash. Um, and right now, now he's a, I hate to use the term, a saleable commodity, mm. right? Someone mm. will take him because he's a winner. Yep, he's, he's a winner. He's still playing good footy. Yep. Um, and he's just a good fellow to have around your footy club. And Brisbane would love to keep him. He, I don't think he's actually gone to them at the moment and said, can I leave straight away? But they're not going to stand his way if he gets a deal that... Mm. that caters for him leaving now and I think yeah. that's what the Warriors are looking at get him straight away um, get Warriors, him in the system the Warriors offer him three years if they get him now yes and Brisbane will chip in some uh, Brisbane will chip in some coin this year mm. or this season on him as well yeah. well they um, owe him one back after taking Walsh so you know. well they've already paid <laughs> well, they've already paid what two months I think by the time yeah. this happens so mm. he'd be on about five six hundred I'd imagine mm. two months of that that's yep. what hundred grand probably that they've already chipped in yeah yeah uh, I think it'd be a really good signing for the Warriors and yeah. for a place that okay. you know traditionally has been a bit of a hard sell sometimes with yeah. free agents. Uh, that's a good pickup for Andrew Webster. Yeah. If, if they get him. So. Well, I've got to say, Andrew, because I texted him about the meeting Ooh, and he told okay. me it was just a couple of old mates catching up because he was over there fishing. You hitting that camera? Mm. And then Dave got the, uh, extracted the truth from types. So, Andrew, Ooh. please. Yeah. All right, there you go. Hey, come on now, Andrew. It's, How's Roger going to go in, no in the centres? Two of us a check. I'm excited about that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he'll go good. He's a good footballer. Yeah. Mm. I'm looking forward yeah. to that. I think they might dip a little bit, though, the Warriors. I just got a feeling they might. Mm. That's such a good Why's year. That? I don't just, know. Well, I'll uh, tell you what, it's Sean Johnson. It, it relies, yeah. If Sean Johnson can have yep. the year that he had this year, which is going to be tough to replicate, yes. given it was such a great year and the you know it came sort of out of the blue when we sort of thought he was on the wane a little bit, but maybe that Dally M snub. Was mm. the best thing yeah, to happen to the Warriors mm. might just give him a little yeah. bit of upside because they've got they've got other halves there, but they're not Sean Johnson. Yeah, you know, Luke no. Metcalf's a good young kid. Chanel Harris, Tavita, um, Ronald Volkman, you know, good yeah. young kids. They're not all going to play, but no. they're not also Sean Johnson. So yeah. no. if Sean Johnson can have that year, but you know, they're just just an addition of Harris, Tavita, and Tuivasa Shek, and potentially Kurt Capel. You've lost Bailey Sirenen, who was a Decent first graders off to Catalans. Mm. Uh, that's all you lose. I think mm. I can see only upside now. And you look at that New South Wales Cup team that mm. David Tangatel has taken over next season. They were prelim, prelim finalists as well this season. And now yep. they've got a flag side coming in for next year. And, you know, yep. I think the way that rugby union's going at the moment, mm. there's opportunities there for mm. the Warriors to really direct some of that good young mm. talent into the club yep. and yeah I, I don't think we'll see a yo-yo effect as far as okay. dropping so badly down like they have for years and having one good year but <laughs> um, top four again is a tough ask because yeah. like, you just you just named that Roosters thing they, they've yeah. got to be top four don't they yeah I, uh, 100% South will South. bounce back yep para um, manly para, um, para. you optimistic you were about to say we'll bounce back and you stopped. <laughs> no, I said para manly. You've been para manly. I was just you, something held you back there. Well, what is something in para? They haven't done much. <laughs> They're quite off season. K- 
keeping their powder dry, waiting mm. for the right signing. The X Factor. The player. X Factor. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, oh, You've been a bit disillusioned, Bob. You're How what? is the search for the but X Factor? It's the same with the Bulldogs. With You look around, there's the free agency market, I've never seen it this bare before. Mm. You know, teams that are signing up for longer, and we mentioned this before, when the salary cap went up, yeah. it enabled good clubs, mm. established clubs, yeah. to retain the... Those elite guys that have already yeah. got, but that next level down, so representative type guys, your Liam Martins, your Dylan Edwards, those yeah. guys who yeah. in another era might have gone to another club are now kept at those ones. So yeah. you're sort of waiting to see, you know, mm. waiting to see who blinks first, but, you know, Canberra have got some money, Cronulla have got some money, Parramatta have got some money, the yeah. Tigers have got some money. They're mm. all sitting there looking mm. whether we can get a signing, but yeah. I don't know. Um, a- anybody at Para? Any of the young blokes coming through who we might see that are getting you a little bit excited? No, I think it's I think it's a wait and see approach, and because yeah. these these those young kids that won ball, you know, from all reports they're still twelve months away. So mm-hmm. your Matt Arthur's, your Richard Penasini's, guys like that, Charlie Geimer, um, Jock Brazzle's a guy, um, Colonel Sanders was Ethan Sanders, well, Canberra bound baby, Canberra yeah. I'd say so. Um, Charlie Geimer, a good young player. Uh, mm. Jock Brazel, who was a schoolboys captain. Um, great Didn't talent. Did he make my top 50 list? Jock I think Brazel. How long was that? He was no, a couple of years ago. Oh, couple I might have missed so, him. No, no, no. Okay. He wasn't in the read well, man's. What's the latest <laughs> Sanders? What, where isn't it? Because they've got to wait till round six. Yeah, round round the six, new rules, okay. yeah. You know, Parramatta right. are hopeful, okay. but how can you keep him when he's... They're still hopeful they can... Well, I think I think he's basically said. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm but going. the thing is, yeah. he's a halfback. He yeah. he can play halfback, and he's not a utility. Yeah. He's yeah. Yeah. they've got a young kid there, Para Josh yeah. Lynn, who yeah. a bit of a bigger body could maybe fill a fourteen role at some point because yeah. um, I think BA has been uh, been saying that you know that he he doesn't want to carry a specialist hooker on the bench. You've got so you've either got Hands or um, or Joey Lassick. So there is a role for a fourteen there. But Ethan Sanders, you've got Mitch is what twenty seven. 28. That sounds about right, yeah. And Dylan at 22, mm. you, there's not a place from there, which okay. sucks as a yeah. team that develops a, a kid like Ethan Sanders. So. What's Matt Arthur like? Good player, Mobsy? Yeah, or yeah. yeah. Uh, he, unlike Jake, looks a lot more like his father than Jake oh, does. Poor kid. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think height wise as well, he's probably a bit more like his dad, but mm. yeah. um, tough, tough young Is kid. He? and. Okay. Um, can carry a chip on his shoulder in a good way because I saw they were getting beaten in a Harold Matz game a couple of years ago and yeah. he came off half-time filthy and then carry him on their shoulders in that yeah. second okay. half and got him over the line. So, um, you know, it's it's a big ask, but mm. whether he could be a guy to come in in a couple of years and be part of that hooking progression yeah. line, yeah. who knows? So, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, nice. I don't know. I don't know. No no really big signing, so um, I'd like to see what Tuolungi does. Yeah, I, I rated him at... Yeah. The Tigers attacking wise, but I he was think very hit and miss at Manly. I thought yeah. last year, and you know, Brad Arthur is very defensive minded with his edge forwards, and yep. you know, well, Bryce had a great year last season, didn't yep. he? Bryce Cartwright, yeah, he so yep. you sort of find your way there. If, if Sean Lane gets a bit of a clear run without injury, geez, this is a Parramatta mm. therapy session, guys. Yeah. Thanks for that. Do I have to no, charge by the hour? Or? Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, breaking news coming out today the worst kept secret in rugby <laughs> league Michael Maguire will be announced as the Blues coach mm, shock horror <gasps> who'd have thought oh, I know <laughs> wow and obviously um, he's, he's gone from the Kiwis which he's already spoken about but what's the go with the Raiders a, it's got a little bit of a last man standing feel about it hasn't it the um, Blues yeah a little bit you know they were obviously want, they were keen on Craig Freddie pulled the pin um, I think he'll stay at camera I think they're going to offer him a reduced role uh, initially, it was talk he would go and they would they wouldn't keep him around. Mm-hmm. But then I think they've sort of landed on a point where um, he has almost a consultancy role with them. Right. Um, you know, if he if he kept the Kiwi job, maybe that wouldn't have been the case. But now the Kiwi job's gone. He's got a bit more time in his hands, mm-hmm. and that's um, that's where I think they land. I think Madge is keen on on doing that. So he'll still be involved at Canberra. Um, yeah, you know, I'm in. in tr- Intrigued to see how he goes as Blues coach. I mean, he's yeah. always done really well with the Kiwis. Yeah. Uh, really well. But this, the, the Blues feel like, you know, Freddie had that great start to his time in charge. Yep. But it just feels like the last couple of years has been pretty dysfunctional. Mm. Um, and as a Queenslander, I've loved every <laughs> minute of it. What, what should be top of the agenda? For, <laughs> a lot of talk about the different things Madge has got to do. What's, what's the most important, what's the first big move? Well, he's obviously got to get his staff right. 
Yeah, and that's that's integral. Right? If he get, mm. gets his staff right, the balance right there, um, that's important. And I think he just needs to get his leaders sorted. But the key, the key is injuries, right? And he can't yeah. control that. I mean, yeah. they know Tommy, they know Latrell. Mm. You stick those two guys in that team, yeah. Yeah. completely different yeah. team. That's right. Completely different yeah. team. Yeah. He's got to, and he's got to make. You know, the biggest issue he's going to face next year is Teddy, and the fullback position, and what he does, and whether he keeps him. Mm. Um, who else I'll, would be the Blues fullback? Um, Dylan. Well, who are the who are the options again? Edwards. Tommy. Luttrell, Tommy Luttrell, yeah. Dylan, I think Tommy's your fullback, right? If he's flying, well, sorry. If Teddy's playing well, starts next year well, Teddy's. I think Teddy stays fullback, mm-hmm. right? But if Teddy and the Roosters struggle, um, or they lose game one, he's, then he's got to make a call. Mm. Jeez, your Rooster could cost us Origin and Robbo's job <laughs> at this point. Come on, Russ. Yeah, well, wouldn't mind seeing Teddy just focus mm. on the Roosters. Yeah. What do you reckon? Bad would you would Teddy be your fullback game one next year? Uh, yeah, we're looking at those other options, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because I like if if Latrell and and, and Turbo are fit, uh, those two in the centres with Teddy at fullback. I, I sat with Russ for Dynamite. this year's Origin series. He yeah. was not happy with the Tedesco criticism. Let me tell you, no. I thought it was a bit over the top too. Actually, yeah. he wasn't playing great, but yeah, he wasn't on his Pat Malone. No, though. no, he wasn't. But it was, you know, not to fluff your nest, but you mm. were pointing out that he was still making 170 odd yeah, metres. And he was, and they were getting pulverised through the middle. And mm, there's yeah. only so much a, a fullback can do, um, mm. especially a guy that that runs that channel so well. Um, you make a little bit of room for him, give him some momentum or um, or a springboard, and he'll he'll cash in. But you know, they're yeah. starting to get this this back line now. If you've got your Bradman, Bess, and yeah. guys like mm. that that are pushing, giving you that depth, that you know. And, all of a sudden, well, yeah, yeah, okay, right. Best, forgot about him. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. the other thing he's got to do, Mobs, he's got to get his team right in game one. Yeah. Because mm. that's one thing Freddie yeah. failed to do the last yeah. two years. Freddie and, and the guys around him completely cocked up their he team. He played catch in up game one. He? he was playing catch up. And they up lost game two years yeah. in a row. I think they lost, they lost two years yeah. in a row, right? Yeah. They lost yeah. game one. And he had to make mass changes yeah. after that. So Madge needs to make sure in game one, because game one's he, Sydney. Sydney, Mel- Sydney, uh, we go Sydney, Melbourne, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, don't we? So you need to nail game. He needs to nail mm. game one. He needs to nail his yeah. team because we know what yep. the Queensland team's going to yep. be. Yeah. The only dilemma um, Billy's got is whether he picks Kalen or not. Mm. You know, Reece, I imagine he'll be loyal and stick Reese at fullback. Whether he picks Kalen on the bench and what that means for like Harry and Ben mm. Hunt, you know. Yep. So that's the only dilemma he's got. But <laughs> Queensland, we're cruising, oh. baby. <laughs> But, but, do, do we pick Caelan Palmer or do we leave him out? Do we need him? Do we need the Dalian winner who had uh, a but, great three-month stretch? But oh, Matt just needs to make sure he gets. He needs to. He needs to nail the team mm. in Origin One because yeah. mm. if he gets that wrong, he's in all sorts. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Um, which it, it, I'll, I'll move into listener questions because we've got a couple here. But um, Righty from the Central Coast. Uh, no, sorry, this is Josh for email first. So he wants to know why people only talk about two things when it comes to Madge. Him not being able to do both jobs at the same time and his conflict of interest with players having to choose a side. I think the glaringly obvious issue is that he would be essentially coaching one half of the Kangaroos pathway system. Second to that, he was literally coaching full-time at club level while coaching the Kiwis for three years. So, um, what's the, I don't understand. What's his issue exactly? What's the question? Well, what's, the, what's the problem here? What's going on, Josh? What's up, buddy? <laughs> I... Was he? Is he? Uh, I wonder whether. I mean, is he saying why aren't we talking about Madge and how good a coach mm. he is, or Madge and how he's going to be around the mm. players? Yeah, because that's always been the the knock on Madge, or the recent knock that he's a bit intense. And but geez, it's work with the Kiwis. That's, mm. Hasn't worried them. Yeah. Got so the to know, a title. I think all this other stuff's a bit of white noise. I mean, it's being resolved anyway mm. now because he's not coaching the Kiwis. Um, and. You know, oh, yeah. I think I think I think you'll do a good job yep. with New South Wales match. But as mm. I said, it all comes down to getting your team right. Yeah. Yeah. If he doesn't nail his team, it doesn't matter how good good yeah, coach he is, right. mm. he'll get beaten. And yeah. then and then you blokes in the New South Wales media, you blue <laughs> supporters will be out for blood. <laughs> you? You'll be calling for his head because mm. that's what you do, unlike us. We stick <laughs> yeah. loyal north of the border. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh, thank God. you, Josh. Yeah. We stick solid. You your blokes coaching just rip staff. and tear. Anyway. Billy, Josh Hannay. Thurston, Cam Smith, oh, just legends. Oh. Nate Miles. Yeah, Miles, yeah, yeah. So that'll be interesting to see who Madge gets around him in terms of form in New South Wales. Mm. Yeah. Players, right? Because yeah. Freddie, I mean, obviously Freddie had, um, Joey was around, mm. Danny Bedaris. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, 
and it worked for Freddie early, but Joe, uh, Madge needs, because Madge, that's one aspect that Madge doesn't have. He hasn't played Origin. Mm. Right? So he doesn't, mm. I'd imagine, he, he, unless you've played it, you can't really understand it. Mm. We might think we know what Origin's about, but yeah, until you've yeah. been in there and played mm. it, and I think Madge needs to, that's one area he needs to get right. He needs to have the right Origin yeah. people around him. Yeah. Well, Fox Sports cool. need to stop hiring our former Origin blokes and get him into coaching setups. Coach, yeah. He's very close Maddie. to Matty Johns, isn't he, Madge? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, Love uh, a bit went all right as a coach. He didn't play Origin. Mm. I, think Mad, does Madge, I think Madge might go all right with Gus as well. Maybe we'll bring Gus and Maddie in. Yeah. Get yeah. the balance. Hey, Gus wasn't an Origin player, but a great Origin coach. Yeah. Mm. Get the right people in. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, Roddy from the Central Coast sent me an email saying, as a fellow Eels supporter, <laughs> God bless you, yeah. I'd like to see what you and the other members of the podcast think of the Eels having a real crack at young English fullback Jack Wellsby mm. and moving Gutho into our Achilles heel at centre. The young kid's a gun. I think Gutho would make a perfect attacking and defending centre. Thoughts? Oh. What do you think about Wellsby? Oh, he's a great player. The only problem is he's on contract for another two years, mm. and, and St Helens don't even let, they, they don't even accept trans. They just don't let guys go. Mm. So you, he's two years away, three mm. years away potentially. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a good well, idea that, in theory. I mean, Wellsby yeah. at Parramatta, goodness yeah. me. Wellsby in the NRL. Well, the other issue is you're going to be fighting with about six, seven clubs for it. Yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. your other problem. Mm. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, you, he, he's going to cost you a lot of money. Mm. And, and you got to find you got to find a better fullback than. Clint Gutherson. Mm. Yeah. That's a thing. And he might he might be that. I mean, he's mm. a really quality mm. player. Yeah. He can play yeah. the game. Um, See, I, I, I'm yet to be convinced that... So, Sh- Sean Russell, Hayes Dunster played fullback um, coming through the ranks at mm. different times. Yet to be convinced that they're in any way ready to take over from Gutho in that mm. role. Yeah. So, you know. No, I, don't, I, I, like, the, I like the concept... But mm. I think oh, that's a great concept. I think you're in a dogfight to get him, yeah. and you've got mm. to wait two years. Yeah, well, what that's about your issue? The other part of that question is how Gutho as a centre. Um, how's I mean, he's done it, done it before a long time ago, hasn't he? But yeah, there's no I, guarantee that he. Mm. Would. I love Gutho's work rate and his positioning. It's it's mm. hard to, you know, it's hard to top that. So mm. I, I still think Gutho's a fullback. I don't understand the. the I don't. I don't know whether I call it criticism. But the analysis of Gutho as a fullback, he's yeah. outstanding. I know. He's yeah. such a good player. Yeah. Mm. Well, he's their heart and soul. Yeah. But you see it, they, they always do fullback yeah. rankings, and he's below um, Teddy, Latrell, Turbo, Dylan Edwards, and they'll find someone else mm. to yeah. push mm. above him and go, it's just, if I was Gutho, I'd be looking at it and just going, right, yeah. okay, I'd be taking that personally. I'd be, mm. I'd be Michael Jordan last dancing it. Oh, I took but that pr- personal. But, but who's driving this? Who's driving this, the, the Gutho? The X Factor, the Gutho mm. to the centres. Well, they they who's, who's they want this? an X Factor. There's yeah. no doubt. People at Parramatta are saying they yeah. want an X Factor, but yeah. it's it's what form you can find one, you know, mm. and where you can pick one out from. But mm. you know, other than that, develop them, develop the young guys, and you know, the Will yeah. Penasini's been a great guy coming through. Good player. Um, yeah. yeah. So Is his brother a good player. Uh, yeah, he's been going all right. So Is with it, you know, okay. good young kid. It needs to develop, of course, but. Yeah. You know, maybe down the line you might have R. Penasini one side, nice. W. Penasini the yeah. other side. So, there you go. Um, really, here's one for you. Will tw- uh, from Jesus is King. Will Twiggy <laughs> Forrest potentially look into private ownership of the Dragons? I wouldn't have thought so. Or I involvement mean, I, somewhere? I, I, if you're the Dragons, well, you're looking going. Hold on. The issue is I can't. On? I don't think St George have got any, any desire to sell their stake, mm-hmm. and I don't think Wynn have got any. Bruce Gordon's got any desire to sell his stake. So. I'd imagine the only side of that he could get his hands on is maybe if Bruce decides to yeah. split 25% and sell mm. 25 to Twiggy. But Twiggy's a bit of a rugby man too, isn't he? I think yeah. rather than a rugby league Well, man. that's the exciting thing about Twiggy. Like, Twiggy's propped up. He saved the Western Force yeah. by himself. But the fact he's dipping his toe into league, even, even like this, I think yeah. that's pretty exciting. Yeah. And maybe the NRL should maybe, or maybe they have already picked up the mm. phone to Twiggy and say, hey, look, we've got expansion on the horizon here. You want to throw us some yeah. cash? Yeah. I mean, well, so just to explain yeah. this for you're not, you're not doing your due diligence no. if you're not having that meeting. So explain this for those who haven't track. listened to this, who haven't heard this as yet. So Twiggy Forrest invest, coming into the Dragons in a sponsorship. Yeah, so he's got a mob called, he's got a company called Squadron, I think it's Squadron Energy that yep. he founded. Yep. They're on the back of the shirt this season, but yep. they're becoming the front of shirt sponsor, taking over from St George St. Bank George. Mm. Uh, at the end of the season. So I mean, talking about a multi-million dollar deal, well, yeah. well in excess of a million dollars a season. Mm. That's good for the Dragons. It's this is fantastic that's for the great. Dragons. It's great. And, you know, if, if, 
you're right if they play it right with a guy like Twiggy invo- involved who who knows where it leads right down the track but mm. you know, you're right Russ I mean if the NRL are looking at Perth seriously at all they need to get him involved he mm. needs to be involved I know the people in Perth have reached out to him previously okay. and I think he sort of um, kept his distance but mm. why wouldn't you look at him Gina Reinhardt oh exactly yeah. I mean, mm. yeah. I'd be tapping them all up for yeah. cash yeah. they've yeah. got plenty of it blimey do we mm. see the Dragons play a few games in, in Perth down the track? Well, maybe down the track with this, yeah, good, with this deal. Good yeah, it's not a bad shout. Oh. Perth Dragons, you're trying to relocate them, Ross? That's right. <laughs> um, there was one, we'll have to dig it out for for another time. There was a big email that we had. I don't know if we, we won't have time to go through it about mm. um, someone suggesting a, a look at the you NRL know, getting professional and getting more professional and um, <laughs> moving a few teams around and looking at how that... But we'll, we'll do that another time, but that was okay. a good one. But one I do have to do is I have to apologise on behalf of Reedy to Daniel Watson-Hayes, who was asked about Craig Bellamy back to training and whether... Because him and Frank Panisi do their study tours and um, Reedy, you dropped the ball on this one. You spoke to Frank, you didn't ask. No, I, I well, didn't speak spoke to with. Frank. No? He got a bit, he's a bit. He's put me on a ban at the moment. I'm on, on a oh. short-term oh. ban. Well, I hope, is, it's a, I hope it's a short-term ban, Frankie. Because uh, <laughs> he does this occasionally. Frank gets a bit fired up. And, yeah, it's just what did some, you do this oh, time? it was a Pap story a few weeks ago when he said, oh, you know, that rumour about him being offered to cl- oh. on the clubs. And mm. Frank didn't like the yarn, so he's put me on a little short-term oh. ban. So I actually haven't I, spoken to him about this. Well, I've had a couple of clubs ask... People I've spoken a couple of clubs asking about that same thing about what's going on there with Pappenhausen. No, I think the, uh, the Craig mm. and Frank have have told Paps he's wanted at the club. Yeah. So you know, I think it was much ado about nothing. I actually, bumped into Paps the other day at the airport. Funnily enough. Yeah. Yeah, he was over head, heading on uh, over to America. No, nice. it's in a good place. Nice. Wasn't limping. He looked fine. Um, but they spent time. I know they spent time with Ange Postecoglou at Tottenham. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they went to some clubs up in Ireland, some rugby clubs. I we'll think. have to get back and help Ange. They've dropped a couple on the bounce now, haven't yeah, they? Munster. Yeah. That'd be Munster. Munster, yeah. was it? Though? Probably. I just, yeah. yeah. I just think he's talking about Red. It's the only Irish club. It's a big club. <laughs> Cameron Munster <laughs> or <laughs> Munster the big Irish? Oh, okay, right. Cameron right. Munster. Yeah, he's got right. his own uh, So I haven't spoken to Frank. I've got to get on to Craig next week for that clipboard thing. Mm. We do. So, what are you just on the storm fullback? Sorry, have we answered the. We covered this one? Yeah. Who starts? Who oh, starts perhaps, a fullback? Perhaps is fit. Paps starts. He's ready for round one? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah he'll be yeah. ready for round one. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, uh, you meaning go to the, what's meaning the, the centres. centres and sort of far longo, I imagine he's there 14. 14, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Tough, good. tough round one matchup to keep that streak alive. You play Penrith. The well, is that game tr- in Melbourne or Penrith? Melbourne, isn't it? Uh, I think it's ooh, in Melbourne from memory. I've got to double check. I um, think it's in Melbourne. I could um, be wrong. Now, very quickly, because we've got to get you back to the golf. Dinner plans, or are you running? Well, can I tell you, one of the great pleasures of covering the golf is you get a buffet every day. So yesterday we had Massaman beef curry, but you know what's a bit strange about it? What would you normally have as a side with Massaman beef curry? Bit of rice, rice. Yeah, no rice. Tons of rice. No rice. You need rice. It had the best thing. It had an Indian potato salad and green beans. So nothing. Mm. Well, the potatoes would soak it up a tiny bit. Well, sauce, I'm, off, not, I'm off carbs, so I didn't right. eat any potatoes. Yeah. He's, li- he's Look at him, he's no, wasting no, away. I'll, yeah, I'll put a bit on this week. So I don't know what to, I don't know what I'm looking forward to today at the did golf, you, but um, it's a buffet, did and you I always have compl- seconds, did you lodge so a I won't have dinner tonight. Did you lodge a complaint? I didn't, I thought the... that'd be a bit you know, mm. over the top. Well, okay. well, so well, I'm going to give, I might give, I'd be a very light dinner. I may, on the way home, buy myself two lamb cutlets. <laughs> just two? <laughs> just two. Crumb them in a bit of crumb <laughs> and parmesan. Have you met a, a, a less family man than Reedy? My kids dinner. are fussy. <laughs> right? They annoy me because I, like I like to eat. <laughs> the breakaway dinner. So wow. I, That's I, incredible. It drives my wife nuts too. My wife yeah. doesn't like it. I one man myself. breakaway. Yeah. You've got to stick with the Peloton when it comes to no. dinner. Well, no. Come on. Jackson and I are going to the golf tomorrow. So um, yeah. yes. Are I'm you like, in the party hut? No, we we're in the. Oh, um, no. It might be some corporate hospitality oh, coming on the 18th. Yeah, eh? Maybe. Mm. Oh wow. We may be in a nice area. So, and we may be. be joined by your man with the lawnmower, uh, who's <laughs> promising to wear. Phil some, Buzz Rothfield. What's he wearing beige slacks or something? Oh, he wants to look like he? Freddie Couples or something. So he's <laughs> refusing to wear shorts. Um, he's lost a bit of weight, Buzz. He's, Despite he's having looking the fit. best calves in Sydney for a bloke over 60, as he tells no, me. He says, yeah, yeah. He says he's, he's not going to wear some, the shorts. No, he's wearing slacks. He's looking fit. He's going to be looking like a golfer. Oh, that'll be fun for you, blokes. You'll yeah. enjoy that. We'll, we'll send not, you some spotters. What's, what's the dinner plan, though? So? Well, so I'm going to carb load to 
you know. Load. Oh, I was, I was thinking I'd sort of back off and anticipate uh, lots of food tomorrow. But mm. um, yeah, I don't know. My homemade hamburgers, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think right. I'd do that. Make them yourself, Dan. Ask. Well, uh, secret. Is there a secret like, ingredient? Yeah, or? Uh, not a secret ingredient. No, no. Just the old. Um, yeah, just just chuck a bit of mince and onion and a bit of Worcestershire sauce, some grated carrots. Uh, normally that sees me right mm. at that. Just oh, okay. crack those up, bit of egg. Mm, nice. Bind it, bind bind it. it. Bit of, did you put some breadcrumbs in, in there or not? Yeah, uh, not into a burger, no, no. Okay. No, no. Okay. No. okay. Mm. Rissoles. No. Okay. Right, in it goes. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Okay. It's good. All right, what do you think of the fans oh, demand uh, of Jackson yeah. alright oh, I'm sure they'll request again next week request we on again, again next week or what's happening okay. well Gavin our producer's off but he's I'll have to do a shout out to Gavin he's, been, he's been a little unwell Gav so oh, mate oh. thinking of you I hope you get better and yeah. um, he's a Tigers man so I know he, he oh. listens to this and sends why me why don't we send him a cup of cement to harden him up <laughs> wow well, we might not be back at all. You didn't tell us you didn't tell us that wasn't me Gav no, I'm just going to carbo I'm just going to well, I'll just do a just do a, a simple pasta dish tonight. We'll oh, do, okay. Make some pasta and pesto and chicken and oh, do up some veggies. I can't cop pesto. Okay. That's what my pet hates. Really? My dad came... Can I tell you a quick story? Very quick. My dad came down to business a year or so ago. He said, I've got this new dish for you. He said, it's salmon. He, and he brought it out covered in pesto. Yeah. Well, I'm not oh, a, nah. completely ruined it. Nah. I'm with you. I'm not, he, th- I'm he thought he was yeah. like, I should be on MasterChef. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it was pesto out of a yeah. tube, too. Oh, I've no time for pesto. Come on, babe, Baz. Good pasta, fine, but not on salmon. Salmon's yeah, terrible. Right terrible. Right. Anyway. All right, thanks for stopping by, everyone. We'll catch you again next time.